Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah, Introduction to Relativity and Quantum Mechanics. This is uh, lecture number eight, well, we, where we'll be discussing uh, some of the consequences of the Lorentz transformation. Let's start by uh, considering um, the relativistic Dopp Doppler shift. Now, hopefully you're familiar to a degree with the uh, classical Do Doppler shift for acoustic waves, sound waves. Um, uh, at least, uh, if not formally, then maybe from your experience, if you have a, uh, let's say, uh, an ambulance that has uh, a siren going and it's approaching you, then you hear the tone of the, of the sirens actually increase. So you hear a higher tone when it's approaching you, and then once it passes you and it's going away from you, then you'll hear the tone um, uh, get, uh, the tone is, as it's receding is lower. So uh, the, there's, a, there's an analog of this effect for light um, in, um, in, Laurent, in uh, relativistic, um, uh, at relativistic speeds, and uh, so we're going to consider that. Now, uh, let's imagine that we have this situation. We have um, an observer who's here on Earth, and, um, and uh, a star some distance d away from the Earth, and that star is moving with some velocity, uh, and here I've drawn it going off at some angle theta relative to the line of sight between the Earth and the star. Okay, now uh, the 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 um, derivation I'm going to do is uh, is for very large uh, separations um, where uh, the uh, time between pulse, let's imagine that the star is pulsing, okay, with a period, with a proper period, tau sub zero. Now what I mean by proper period is, is that's the time between pulses, the time interval between pulses in the star's frame. Okay, so in the star's frame, time between pulses is tau, is tau naught, tau sub zero, and, um, and the observer is going to measure some different period for those pulses, and we're going to denote, denote uh, that by uh, T, capital T, uh, sub E. So that's a different period in general than what the uh, star itself is actually, um, than the natural period for the, for the pulses, okay? So this derivation is basically only formally good when D, big D, the distance between pulses, the distance between the Earth and the star is much larger than than um, c times tau naught. Okay, that's a distance, and um, and as long as that's true, then then uh, this derivation works. Okay, so here's our there's our situation, and um, what we'll find is that there are two actually different effects which contribute to the Doppler shift, the relativistic Doppler shift. Okay, so the first the first uh, fact that we have to take into account is time dilation, right? So the the period that um, that the Earthbound observer um, measures t sub e is not generally the same as the proper period for two reasons. The first is time dilation. Um, we know that the that the um, uh, that the time interval uh, uh, for the light pulse emissions, as measured uh, as measured in the observer's frame, is uh, time dilated by this by the Lorentz factor gamma, where again gamma is uh, one over square root of one minus beta square, and beta is equal to v over c. Okay. Okay. So the um, the second effect is the movement of the star. Okay. So between the pulses, as observed. Um, between the pulses of the star, then um, the star actually moves a distance, which we'll call delta d, along the separation, the line of separation between the Earth and the star. And delta d is just equal to the um, time dilated period of the star, of the, um, uh, of the star times um, the the velocity times cosine theta so that you get only the component along the direction. 